Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you're made aware of any time we put new content on. We have videos going up daily, but sometimes two, three times a day. And every memory, every interview, every player we talk about is, is, is priceless. So uh, make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss any of the content coming up. Lots of great guests, lots of great fans, lots of great ex-players coming up, including today's guest, sports journalist, Dan Wolfenden. Hi, Dan. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not bad, not bad. How's, um, what's it like sort of doing all the sport, particularly when there was no sport? What did you do? Oh, it, was, uh, it was difficult. It was paranormal, actually, if that's uh, the right way to put it. You know, I, um, I did struggle for content, you know, but as soon as it came back, I, I thought, right, I'm going to get onto this. I'll just, um, you know, raise my Twitter following and, and yeah. all of this. Admittedly, I, I don't have a job. I actually had a part-time academy job at Wigan, uh, but yeah. they've recently gone into administration. So yes. that's just the luck I've had really recently. Um, and I've just graduated with a first, so... Fingers crossed, we can get out there and find something soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now there's a now, there's, you know, not having any sport, we've got this plethora of sport now. We're all over the bloody place now. I can't keep up with it sometimes. All the games, it's it's ridiculous. I know exactly. Yeah, it's on a way, like we got Burnley on Wednesday at six. It's ridiculous. I can't, but like you said, I can't keep up with it. I know. I like look at my phone at like seven o'clock, and I forgot there's like six because like six o'clock is such a weird time, isn't it, for a game during midweek or any time really. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like the obviously the uh, the La Liga. That's all what they used to do, didn't they? So every game would follow itself. So yeah. you wouldn't have that. Yeah. So I can see why they're doing it, but um, yeah, and, and it looks like even more so we're stacked up towards the end of the season. You know, with obviously the the last few games, everyone seems to be playing at the same time. So yeah, Absolutely. and that'll continue as well with the uh, the transfer window August to October, I believe now. So yeah, be a strange yeah. One. yeah, it's all going to be weird. It's all weird. Yeah, they wanted to. Um, actually end it before the season started so that'll, that'll change now um but yeah yeah it's just it's just all weird i think but but i mean to be fair i mean they've, they've done a good job you know they've sorted it all out i'll be honest you know having been one of the they have the, credit to them they have they've done well they've tried to, they've tried to make it a bit more engaging for the tv fan because every fan is now a tv yeah. fan um yeah. but yeah no it's good i mean it's you know and to be fair you know it was. It's not like a complete ball ache having to get through the. You know when you because obviously I'm one of the 300 that are there. So having to get your temperature yeah. checked and, the and tests fill it. they do everything. Yeah. yeah. Every day draining. Um, uh, yeah. It's, you know, and yeah, they make they make it and they do the best job they can. You know, with a sound on the TV as well, or you can have it without to you know listen yeah. to the players and uh, stuff like that. But it'd be for me, it'd be weird for the players because they don't have any noise of the fans and and the influence of the fans, which West Ham are massive for. So I don't know how that impacts them, but we seem to do all right recently. So yeah, we seem, I think we've got used to it. Yeah, I think we've got used to it more than anything. But I think you, I agree. You know, that's why, and obviously we can't pipe in any crowd noise um, during game, because obviously that will then conflict with the FIFA mm -hmm. 20 crowd noise being pumped in by the broadcasters. So that must yeah. be weird yeah. for the players. Um, but you know, like we've had to do goal music, because otherwise, it's a bit sort of like it's it's a real sort of damp squid, isn't it? So you know, like on yeah. like the Chelsea we're game, you know, the big screens as well, aren't we? Yeah, you've got the big screens as well, big and screens. it's just all a bit weird, you know. And so you know, yeah, they score a goal, great, yeah, but there's like no sort of celebration or anything to do. So we have to put goal music on, oh. and uh, yeah. So ironically, the first time we did it was Suchek's goal that didn't exist, and they got chalked off against Chelsea. But hey ho. Um, <laughs> some things never change. Fo yeah, yeah. Exactly, no. football can football. You know, football can can stop for a hundred days, but West Ham always seem to get screwed over by VAR. Doesn't matter. Yeah, pre or post. VAR is correct sometimes. It is like, uh, but you know, we've had it a few times. Sheffield United away with Rice. It wasn't yeah. intentional. A few seasons ago, that would have been fine. Why was it chalked off? Mm. You know, the same with Suchek. Antonio was offside. His arm was offside. But yeah. Uh, it's, Fine margins. It's just but he's on the floor. Yeah, exactly. Unfair, he's like on know. the floor, and it's like you know. Yeah, he can't help it, can he? You no. know. But. I like the fact that there's like no grey area. It, well, not no, that, 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 no. We're actually making more grey areas. But I like the fact that you know, with like the whole offside thing, it literally is. You know, you are offside. Yeah. Your toes offside. Yeah. Fair enough. That's fair enough. You know, it's like the goal line technology. But it's when you've got these 
these sort of grey areas that are now creeping in. So like the Antonio thing yesterday, or not the other day, uh, Declan Rice, as you said, the, the handball. And it, you, you, you we'll get to a point where there'll be this, you know, definitive rule. And obviously, you know, as, as football happens, you know, things change. You know, that the whole thing with the, the first game, wasn't it, with the um, Sheffield United Villa game where the, the goal should have stood and, and actually VAR should have, intervened but yeah he so, I mean, was behind the post wasn't he i don't understand that i was watching it perplexed but for me like you said it's the fine margin between being innocuous and being purposeful so yeah. spurs chelsea last season when chelsea won two and i think uh chelsea's second goal the penalty williams scored where uh, the keeper clattered into marcus alonso mm. keeper gave uh, the referee gave it either way but var intervened and that, that was the beauty of it it did well yeah. but stuff like yeah. declan rice and antonio um, that's where it's a bit, you know, a bit ridiculous for me, and needs to be looked at more. I think. I think it will be. Yeah, I think it will. Be. I think. I think it's a case now of let's just get the season over with now, and and yeah. and, and get it over as quick as possible before there's any yeah. second peaks, God forbid, or anything yeah. like that. And yeah, so you're uh, right. then you're right. Yeah, I think. Uh, but it, I, I, I totally, I'm totally for it because I think if the technology's there, we should be using it. Um, and I think exactly. hopefully yeah. more you're. It, more than obviously the, the referees have now had a directive to to use the, the screen monitors, which again I haven't seen anyone use it yet. Uh, mm. <laughs> although I was watching Galatasaray the other day versus can't remember oh, who it was. Oh, was it the Ghoulish challenge? The the, yeah, exactly. Two old boys doing well over there. Some boys. Yeah, exactly. But you're right. <laughs> and, and the referee went back and looked at it, and yeah, it figured he should have got set off. It was clearly, right decision, yeah. And that's that's how it works. I mean, it was a nasty challenge, wasn't it? DeCost has always been like that, hasn't he? Even at West Ham, but yeah, I think we shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. No, exactly. Right. Anyway, anyway, we can talk about you know, this yeah, other other channels, other channels talk about the the present day. Yeah. I don't I don't do that. I talk about I talk about the past. Um. So for you, Dan, why West Ham? Because I'm not I'm not detecting a, a Cockney accent in your voice. So why West no, Ham? Exactly. Uh. Well, my dad is from Somerset down south. Um, yeah. So that's my allegiance down south. But he actually used to go to games, He, as well as Bath City. He loved Bobby Moore. He loved all of them. He loved Trevor Brookings. So he thought, I'd go to a few games. And I didn't have a choice. I wanted to support West Ham anyway. Um, yeah. So we are season ticket holders. We travel from Leeds to London every weekend or every away game mostly. Yeah. But the last three years, I've been at university. So it's a bit been a bit few and far between, but I've, I've been to the local games, Everton away, West Ham at home, but my sister's actually um, taken my place now and she goes instead of me. So, but um, yeah, no, that's basically how it's come across. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. That's nice. It's nice. But I mean, trekking, was it from Leeds to, to East East London every day? Every yeah, day. Leeds to East like, London, yeah. That must have been a right trip. Yeah. We do it in a day there and back, but it, it's completely worth it. I wouldn't change it for the world. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I when I was when I was at uni, my, my house. I mean, I, I was at Loughborough, and and we used to obviously I was still doing the West Ham stuff. I was doing that, so yeah. I'd be travelling every weekend back. Um, I mean, like, it was only like an hour and a half. It's not that far. Um, not as far as Leeds, but um, obviously sometimes I do the reserve team games and stuff. So me and my housemates would would jump in the car and drive down on a, on the wet Tuesday to play you know, full of reserves and then and then uh, back up again and uh, no yeah it's all fun and games it's all fun and obviously that was you know it was great because one of them was a Sheffield Wednesday fan so he hated Sheffield United as much as I did which was good uh, and the other one was uh, he was he was Leeds his, his, grand, his granddad was Don Revy so um, oh, really? yeah so oh, we used to hopefully going up aren't they so yeah be no nice it'd be, for... be good to see uh, it'd be good to see Leeds at back up I think I think they're yeah all my mates are Leeds fans so I hope I they do yeah, well, at least yeah. it means you can get a lot of stick. Yeah, you get a lot yeah. of stick, and then at least let twice twice a season you will have some. Uh, well, hopefully, fingers crossed that we, <laughs> we stay up. I remember going Leeds away a few years ago. I remember we were in the Championship, we drew one one with them. Yeah, that was uh, that was an awful day, awful experience because we were treated like um, like prisoners. You know, going outside and guarded and all of that. It was yeah. a bit extreme. But, I remember, I remember um, happening, that happened at Leicester. We we one game we Wester away. At the old Filbert Street, and it was because obviously it was a, it was a Christmas game, and I was at I was still at Loughborough, so we had I had my house, so we stayed there, and yeah, we was outside like up against the the real iron gates, and yeah. it was like yeah, it's weird. Mm, was strange, yeah. yeah. But I suppose that's where that you know we, we have a reputation that, that precedes us sometimes, which is not not really uh, not really necessarily uh, not in the old days maybe, but yeah. not nowadays, not nowadays. So so obviously since obviously you know traveling down 
you know, from, from Leeds down and, and, and seeing West Ham and obviously bits and bobs when you've been at uni. You know, what, what sort of, what stands out to you as sort of your, your memories of West Ham, sort of your fondness? Because obviously we'll have loads more soon because we're, win, we're winning titles and FA Cups and all I that. Lot we've won the World Cup year. already. We've done that. We've done a lot, we, haven't we? We've, we've, we've done it, yeah, completed it. Yeah, we've done it. We don't need to do anything else. Um, good question. Uh, well, I've been to loads of finals. Wembley obviously stood out for me as well. Yeah. I was high up and uh, Vast Hayes winner. Obviously, it was so memorable. Uh, the Cardiff Cup final as well. I was only a little boy, about five or six at the time. Um, and my first actual game for West Ham, I um, I was a mascot against Sunderland. We lost 2-1 in 2005. Do you remember that in the Championship? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. scored the winner. Um, and Nick McCarthy was Sunderland boss. But I was on the pitch as a mascot and I got, got to meet all the players in the dressing room because obviously it was a, the mascot experience back then was a lot different to how it is now. It's more Very limited so. now, of course. Yeah. Which, um, I understand. Um, but yeah, just, just all an abundance of things. And obviously Upton Park was the main one, you know, uh, season ticket and the Bobby Moore upper, uh, just going to watch the games and how close we were to the players, the atmosphere. Um, it's obviously not the same as it is now, but the, the Olympic Stadium, as much stick as it does get, it's, it's, it's impressive to look at on the eye, isn't it? It's just not yeah. the same atmosphere-wise. Um, and they, should, they could have, for me, extended it, but... Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's one of those things, isn't it? It's, it's all dependent on the team, you know. Um, if the team are winning, uh, no one gives a shit about the stadium, to be honest. You no, know, exactly. And, that, yeah. and that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? I think it's, it's a case of yeah. the team perform well, no one cares. You know, obviously there was a period where we did quite well recently, um, yeah. you know, last season rather, and I didn't hear any rumblings about the stadium. But as soon as, you know... Nail on the head. As, yeah, as long as we win, you know, if we lose, you look at all the other problems, don't you? You know, you can stem mm. from every little problem and, and have an excuse. But if you win, that's all that matters. And if the yeah. team perform and care for the, the badge, that's all that you want. So. Exactly, exactly. But that's, that's West Ham. You know, we, we always need something to moan about. It's like, it, it's nice that football's yeah. back so people can carry on starting to moan about the, the team rather than the infrastructure mm. or, or what's going on behind the scenes. You know, now they can just moan about the team now, which is nice. Because um, <laughs> West Ham, love, yeah, we, we love a moan, don't we? Um, and we? We're not in it for the football. Exactly, yeah. We're not in it for the football, are we? No. Because, you know, we no, wouldn't be West no. Ham fans. So, <laughs> <laughs> It'd be boring winning every week anyway. I'd be it bored would. being a Man City fan. Yeah. You know, I honestly would. I, think I always say that to bad when it No, I, I agree. And I think they're probably like, I reckon Man City fans are probably enjoying the fact that they're losing a couple of games at the moment. Because like, you know, as you said, they've got nothing to, you know, it's all been nice and rosy for them really, hasn't it? And, and Liverpool fans yeah. as well, you know, they've had, they've had yeah. a torrid time since they've, they've won, the, won the title. And I think they, you they've know, still got that ha- uh, hangover, haven't they, Russ? I think still got that hangover. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, no, I, I agree totally. But, as, you know, as, thankfully, you know, it didn't mean that <clears throat> any of the ones around us picked up any points against them. And, you know, that's, that's, exactly. that's the one thing I give a shit about. As long as they turn up for, for those yeah. games, that's all right. And uh, we're fortunate. That's why we'll stay. Yeah. No, I agree totally. stay up. Yeah. Um, Norwich and Villa are gone for me already. It's just that last spot, which I think Bournemouth will take. Yeah. I think Bournemouth are gone as well. Um, I think so. But I... yeah, yeah. It, it depends on staying up on other teams around us performing worse. And I think that's what's happening. But we're actually picking up some good points. Yeah. Well now, so. Finally, yeah. I mean, for, since restart, I mean, I, th- I think there's only been one result which has gone against us, so to speak, which was Brighton beating Arsenal. All the other results have that's gone pretty, yeah. to form, really. Um, yeah. And we've finally taken advantage of that. Um, as I said last week, if you, if you said, oh, we'll get, six, we'll get four points out of our last next two games, we'd have gone, oh, yes, please. But it feels like yeah, we should exactly. have had six. You know, it, it's, it's one of those, it's such a West Ham thing, you know. We, we should, yeah, should and I, I said before that, I said we would have lost against Chelsea and lost against Newcastle because the two tough games, aren't they, on paper? Mm. Um, Newcastle have got that same maximum guy. We handled him really well, actually, I thought. Really well. He was the main threat. And Chelsea just weren't at the races, really. So, um, it was typical West Ham. Yeah. It is. A, but, you know, it, it doesn't make it doesn't mean a, a jot if we don't then start, you know, picking up the Burnleys and, and, and those games now. Cause exactly. We've got to follow it up. Yeah. Critical. And hopefully it means that Haller might be back. And I think we do miss that focal point. Although Antonio lugs his guts up, as soon as it goes up front, there seems to be we, we lose no more balls around. than we have. Yeah, it's no one around him. So I mean the T the three are there. You, you know, Haller, Haller, Bowen and, and Antonio, those three, that's the three you want up front. And it's so obvious. It is now. Exactly, yeah. It is. Yeah. 
Bowen's, not... Bowen's fitted really well, hasn't he? You know, oh, he's, 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 he's a top player, you can tell. And with regard to Halle, he's won 206 aerial duels this season. That's the most in the league. So it's meant to, isn't it? Yeah. He's known about it. You there's know? no one around when him. When you look around him, exactly, there's no one around him in Frankfurt. He, he had Jovic and Rebic yep. close to him on either side, and that's what brought the best out of him, because they mm. rotated. Um, and you can't just put him into the Premier League, which is a more physical league, on his, on his own and go, I will fit him well there. You need to yeah, yeah. frame it around him and the players he signed so no i agree i agree totally and and you and you saw that the glimpses when we played southampton before before lockdown happened he played with antonio up front and he looked to complete the rabonas were coming out you know he just looked so confident exactly. um exactly. and that's the way and i think him and bowen and antonio would be a frightening front three um and so yeah and i just think you know he's you look at Look at Moyes has brought in as well in a shoe check as you know, I just think the last two day two games he's been playing out of his skin. Um, yeah, he's a good I think good him player. and Noble and and him and him and Rice and then Noble cameo role, so to speak. Um, as and when we need an extra bit of steel in there. If not, he drops out and you put four nails in or someone or lands in it. And I think you've got a nice yeah. six there. You've got a nice six there. You've just, got options there, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you really you do. Know, you've, you've, you've got a good squad, it's just being dysfunctional, you know, they've not worked together. And if mm. Moyes can do that and implement, you know, a team that works hard and together, like Sheffield United, they haven't got the best team on paper. Oh, no, you're they? right. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got some bang average players. I bet you couldn't name half the entire squad, if I'm honest with you. But they've just got a team that are unified, that works together, and that's how they've been so successful. Like Burnley as well in the past, and Bournemouth when you know a few years ago. Um, these managers are just getting the best out of limited resources, and I hope Moyes can do the same here. So. Yeah, and I think there's a there's, there's there's clearly a blueprint there of how he wants to take it forward. So you know, getting these hungry championship young, you know, players in there. Um, you know, obviously there's the couple of lads from Brentford and the QPR guy and the guy from Wigan, and you know, there's all these players. There's some really good championship players. I think, you know, young, youthful, energetic. That's how you. That's how you build a team. And you've yeah, got a team people who try as well. You know, yeah. they're not they haven't had their feet burnt going to Italy or going to China and coming back and earning lots of money, then earning less money at the Premier League and then they're, they're just walking walking for the paycheck. Yeah, you, know, you, you need the hungry people, and that's something like Boeing. I mean, I didn't realise how much of a great um you know corner taker and free kick taker he is, you know, because usually it's snotty, really. Uh-huh. Who's your man? Yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah. Corners are fantastic. Yeah. I was aware of that at Hull because he um, he was in the academy, wasn't he? And then he came up, he scored against Villa, and he and he just went from there. He just never looked back, really. But um, no, he was a good player. When I, when we were after him, I, I was excited because yeah. um, I thought Newcastle were actually going to get him before us. But no, he's like you said, he's fitted in really well. He complements other player, other players. Uh, four nails his ball to him against Newcastle for the first goal was was exceptional. But that's mm-hmm. Bowen's time, and then his run as well in behind the defender, which which is intelligent as well. So we yeah. bring the best out in other players as well as Bowen. So. No, definitely. Definitely. No, I, I think he, he's, he's a good he's a good shout. And I think uh, as long as we keep him fit. Um, and he, he's he got a bit of bulk about him as well. Do you know what I mean? He's not like when he, he's, he's a stocky fella. You know, he's a stocky fella. Yeah. And Compared to that. Anderson and Lanzini, you know, they both mm. do have ability, but they're just too easily pushed off the ball. Lanzini, uh, Lanzini played against Newcastle, didn't he? And he's not a winger because no. he's exposed there. You know, he's going to get pushed about on the wing and he's just too lightweight. Him and Anderson get pushed off the ball too easily and that's the difference between them and Bowen. Bowen, you know, he's had experience in the English game and he knows what it's like to mm. be shoved about and, you know, for some defender to be in and amongst him. And um, Anderson and Lanzini need to work on that for me. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Anyway, speaking about players, as we are, nice segue. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're doing this Hammers 11. That's the whole point of the channel, really. So the idea is picking the 11, 11 players uh, around, you know, for you. It could be your know, favourite players, the technically best players, or the worst players. It doesn't really matter, really. It's your 11. You talk about whoever you want to talk about. Um, the, the idea is we have to be alive to have seen them play. Um, otherwise, everyone would have the same eleven, pretty much. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the case. Um, and uh, we try and keep it to a four-four-two, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a bit, you know, soft in my old age. So if you want to go, you know, three at the back, whatever, it's fine. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, four-four-two for me, no Good. problem. That's what I'm I like for that. So. Right, okay, four-four-two for Dan. Who is between the sticks, Dan? Oh, this was a tough one, but I'm going to go uh, Rob Green. Yep. The servant he was for for West Ham. Uh, some of the saves he made as well. You know, I remember going to away games and 
he made some incredible saves that kept us in the game. But uh, Jimmy Walker and Fabianski as well have got to be mentioned. It was close between them three. Uh, the other two, you know, Fab, what he's done through the years, and Jimmy Walker was a great servant as well. But I think Green just. And I think especially now because he's got his like Seamus WWE haircut. It's just, oh my God, mental. don't get me started on that. I don't know what. I think lockdown's got to him a bit too much. But. Yeah, I love Robert Green. He's so funny. He doesn't, doesn't take himself too seriously, clearly. Um, but, you know, that's what I like in a player. You know, I think people do take, players take themselves far too seriously. Um, do, yeah. And, and sort of the, the modern player particularly. So, you know, someone like Robert Green or, you know, Crouchy or people like that. I like players who just know, you know, you know, they're fortunate to have a great career and, you know, people take the piss out of them, but they'll take yeah. the piss out of them back. Yeah. And I think that's great. All right, but like Greeno in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally. Right, Greeno's in. Uh, left back, Dan, who we got left back, man? Left back, uh, Konczewski for me. Conch, nice. I think uh, Conch I think is that's just... that's the first something. time he's come up. I always have really? my spreadsheet up. Yeah, I'm very poor. I always have my spreadsheet up, and I, I haven't got it up today. Konczewski, Konczewski, Konczewski. No, second time. But yeah, there's almost 100 so, people. Uh, that's surprising me, yeah, because I just thought he was solid. That goal mm. he scored uh, against Liverpool in the Cup. And I, was, I don't know if it was a fluke or not, but it was a great goal. Um, Elunga as well. He was a good player. Yeah. I liked him. He just did the simple things in there. George McCartney. I know Gonzo mentioned it. Uh, he had him in there, but... Solid. Yeah, he was a good player too. So there's some good left backs we've had, but yeah. conch for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, still, you know, in the in the setup at the club, isn't he? Conchies, and so uh, yes. he's yeah. helping the, the lone players. I can't remember exactly who he's but that, that's great. Yeah, Paul Konchesky, nice fella. Okay, that's a good shout. And he's got a very nice cafe, um, which he runs called Conchies Cafe. There we go. I haven't been free plug conch. Feel free to you know send checks are payable uh, in bacon rolls. I'll take that. Uh, but no, I, I haven't been. But I've seen him on, on to it on a, on Instagram. He's always he's always posting it. I will go there. It's only just down the road. But you know, it's uh, I'll have a bacon roll as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, it might be cold by the time it gets sent up to you, Dan. But that one. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll well, put conch in. Let's go right back. Who have we got right back, man? Right back, uh, Tommy Repka. Oh. yeah, without a doubt for me. Um, such a great servant, and he was hard as nails, wasn't he? He didn't stand anything. He didn't stand a, a left winger getting past him. He just clattered him. Um, that's what I love. You know? Yeah. He was just, he loved West Ham as well. Um, he's such a character, and he's so lovable. So, Tommy Repka. Yeah, he was the, the lovable rogue, wasn't he? And he was, I mean, he was our, you know, he was our uh, our top transfer spend, wasn't he? When he, he was our, you know, when we came in. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and he's one of those things where everyone talks about the the last game when he came off and he knew it was his last game and sort of crying his eyes out and I think someone's so hard. Yeah, exactly. You know, compare that nowadays to, you know, players who don't really care um, and just are there for the, the paychecks, really. Like mm. you said before, just, just shows what a good player and good character Vetka was. So. Yeah. Exactly, and he and he's he's had an even more colourful life since retiring, which is even better. You know, he's he's brilliant, <laughs> absolutely. He's, so, he's just like a walking walking soap opera, basically. Tommy Ripka as well. He is, and I'd also have um, Demel in there as well as, as backup. I yeah. think it was close between them. Demel was just did the simple things really, and he was he was a good player. He was important to us in the championship, uh, um, and I, and I did like Guy Demel. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he was solid, wasn't he? He was a solid bloke, yeah, he's solid. right? Okay, let's put Toby Ripka in. Let's go centre half. Who's your first centre half, Dan? Uh, James Collins. GP. Without a doubt. Yeah. He, he's enough one. Um, I don't know why I didn't get a testimonial or anything, but we won't go into that. Yeah. Uh, but Anton and Gabadon as well were close with, with Jimmy C, but I had to go in. He was just another no nonsense defender, wasn't he? You know, he always he was there all the time. He popped up with some vital goals. Yeah. Uh, and he's, you know, he's one of the. He's probably one of my favourite players for West Ham growing up because he, you know, I know he had two spells with us, but he was all, he always gave 110%. Every single Maybe. game, he was a solid 6, 7 out of 10. Um, mm. You know, even if he made a mistake, he owned up. But another just lovable character and a great servant. Yeah, I love a player who, who goes into the crowd after the game and gives his shirt away. Yeah. You know, it's something about that. It's just something about, you know, it's like most people it's just, just walk off. Things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and, you know, when people say, oh, yeah, he was in the, you know, I was away at Arsenal and he was sitting behind me and little things like that make a massive difference you know to, yeah. to the way players take what fans take to players I mean mm. 
you know, uh, I mean, Collins was, was it nine years he was at the club in total? You know, someone yep. like Winston Reed has been at the club for 10 years. Yep. But I would assume, I would suggest that the fans have a better, better rapport with GP than Reed. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's all about how they interact with the, with the fans, isn't it? I think, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Reed was a, I'm assuming, a quiet character. Uh, yeah. Just a different character to Collins. You know, Reed's also equally as good a servant. He's also in my mentions. He's not in my next centre back role. But oh, that's good. Reed, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Reed, were, Reed was another one who just always put his 110%. And he was a vital player for us. I remember Everton away, we were chanting and um, signing a new contract or something like that because he was. We didn't want him to go because he was such an invaluable player. So, yeah, like you said, he's, he's another one next to Jimmy C. He was just, um, who's been so vital for us for many years. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay, we'll put Collins in. Who's, who's the other, who's the other centre off then, Dan? I had to fit him in somewhere. This is his, this is his natural position, actually, Declan Rice. Um, yeah. You know, my two centre mid roles were taken up, but <laughs> Rice, you know all about him, don't you? He's, he's, he's quality. He's yeah. the next big thing out of the, out of the academy. He's, Against Newcastle, I thought he was brilliant. Um, yeah. He's just vital to the t- He's been a shining light in a in a poor season, in a below par season, uh, the last few seasons. And ever since he made his debut against Burnley away a few years ago, uh, you know, even when he came on, he looked he looked like a player. He just picked the ball up, passed it about, and he always knows what he's going to do before he yeah. gets the ball. Declan Rice, which is the sign of a top player, and it'd be sad to see him go, but he's warranted that move, and he'll go to the very top for me. Yeah, no, I think I think everyone's yeah that that you know it's one. Of, I think it's a case. You know, I think it's a case of when rather than if. To be honest, I think yeah, you know. Well, yeah. But just 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 in terms of his own progression, um, hopefully it'll be a, a, another season, couple of seasons, because I think he's there's definitely room to grow through him. And I think I'd like I would like to see him with a proper season with the armband on. Um, yes, because yeah. I think he seems to have grown. Obviously, when he was. He was captain last couple of you know for the last games, and obviously Noble took it back over when he was in, when he came out at Newcastle. But for someone such a young lad, that that sort of leadership quality is a very rare quality in the game at the moment. There's not many. I wouldn't exactly. say, you know, I wouldn't say Harry Kane, who's England captain, is a leader like Declan Rice is. Declan Rice is very similar to sort of a John Terry type character. That's how I sort of see him, and I think that's obviously yeah, why Mr Lampard sees him as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it, it, and you don't get many young young kids who are like that. And I remember seeing Deck playing for the under-23s when we used to, because we used to do it at London Stadium. I remember, was it last season, maybe the season before he was doing, and and he was head and shoulders about, above everyone in terms of character. You know, you could tell he was going to be a player. Um, yeah. And, and the yeah. thing is, you know, if you give him the armband or, you, you know, like he is now, it'll only help to nurture him and develop him more. You know, you yeah. know he's so mature as a player and he's um, got the right head on his shoulders, but, Next season, like you said, I'd love to see him, you know, with the armband for the whole season because we've lacked a leader you know, the last few seasons. I know Noble's a great character, but he's not, in my opinion, he's not vocal enough on the pitch. He won't hammer people, uh, which is, you know, like I said, what we've lacked. So I think Rice is a proper leader. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and he seems to, despite being young, so to speak, in respect to the rest of the players, he seems to have their respect as well. Do you know what I mean? Which is, which imp- which is important for a captain, yes. but a young captain as well. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I think the last two games we've, we've seen the, the blueprint for Moyes in terms of the midfield with him and hopefully Sujek playing two and then one other and whether it is as you said Noble on a cameo role if we're playing a Burnley we need a bit more steel in there or uh, Snoddy or you know that, that that third role is interchangeable I think based on yes. who you're playing um, there's variability there now you know with the midfield because Suchek we needed the Suchek since Kiati left yes me, box, agreed box who, you know wins everything uh, we lost that and now we got Suchek in and we got Wilshire as well on the bench you know people wanted him to come on against Newcastle but he's mm. different to, uh, to Suchek he you know, he carries the ball well. Mm. He's more, you know, he's more of a quality player on the ball. Suchek is everywhere. He does everything, doesn't he? So, yeah, I, I would uh, like to see him. I'd like to see the three. I'd like to see him, Deck, and, and Wiltshire in the same team. You know, I would, I just think yeah. you've got a nice balance. You've got some defensive work from Suchek, box to box. Deck puts his foot in, but he gets forward quite a bit. He can power. He's sort of he's more of a powerful player. And and then you know, Wiltshire should be our number 10 you know he should you know because you know he's that that sort of level of skill yeah, which is, i yeah. think we meet we, we miss is that sort of picking a pass out but he can put it about as well which i think 
he has the advantage over Lanzini oh, or something like he's that. He's a good player. It's, it's a shame though because I don't think he'll recover properly from his last injury. No. Uh, um, you know, but, but he's such a good player. Uh, Four Niles as well is a quality player. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was buzzing when we signed him uh, because I knew a bit about him from watching in Spain, and he was mm. he was so good. But like you said, you know, Stuchek compliments Rice really well. Uh, you know, because Rice, I thought before Suchek came along, he did too much for the team. And yeah, I agree. Um, Suchek complements him in terms of Su- Suchek does the ugly side, and Rice can just pass it about more, and they work yeah. really well together. So. Yeah, and it's sort of like how how the the Noble Rice partnership worked before. Noble was almost doing too much, and then and then everyone thought, and then he was like, you know, before sort of Rice came into the team, he was like sixty minute mark, weren't he? Basically sixty minutes, Belich would take him off. Yeah, um, yeah. Rice come into the team, he did the more dirty work, so it gave Noble more time to be more the you know, the quarterback position as they used to call it. Yeah. Um, and now it's and now it's and now hopefully it means Suchek can do more and then Suchek can take more less pressure off uh takes pressure off Rice and allows Rice to do what Rice I don't can know do. About you. I don't know about you, but in the final season of the bowling Bilic got it spot on with Noble in the fact that he was playing a deeper role yeah. just in front of the defenders and he was spraying it about and he was and he was loving it under Pellegrini and you know noticeably a bit under Moyes I've noticed that he presses too high and he doesn't have the legs for it sometimes mm-hmm. he's up he's you know uh, in front of Haller you know pressing and, and that just yeah. exposes that's in the midfield against uh, Wolves it was I think Nobs was pressing really high which is, is great because he's always done that but he needs to maintain that position and just drop back because uh, you know shouldered Suchek to do too much you know and so, you know, Suchek and Rice, you know, just complement each other very well and they stay side by side, which, which helps the team. Yeah, no, totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, that's Deckard. <laughs> Love the way we DJ. Right, okay, let's go to midfield then. Let's go left left midfield then. Dan, who have we got left midfield, man? Pye. Yeah, Dimmy Pye. Yeah, completely. You know, the way he left the club wasn't, the, you know, shafted as it did. Yeah. Didn't it completely shut the village as well? Yeah, well, but the player he was, I have he's probably the best technical player I've seen since I've watched West Ham. I think he's, I think he was better than Decanio, yeah, I do honestly. Um, the ability, I remember Man United in the cup, he had a free kick. De Gea's obviously was at the time a very good keeper, I'm not sure he is anymore, but to beat him from that distance, yeah, was was beyond me and against Palace as well. The stuff he could do on the ball was was mind blowing. No, I totally agree. And I, I think I think you're right. I think he is um he was technically the best player I've seen at West Ham. Uh, I think Decanio is a better player, not a better technically player. You know, because I think as to be a, a decent player you need it's almost like a yeah pie chart. You need to be technically gifted. You need to have the passion, and you need to have that sort of entertainment value. And and yes. Pyatt definitely had the technical, you know, but he didn't have the passion or the entertainment no. value like De Canio would. So you not know, the team ethic either. No, yeah, team ethic. Yeah, we we'll put full through on it. But yeah, and so De Canio had it all. But but I think Pyatt was was technically a, a far better player. Um, yes. Because he would, you know, he wasn't particularly quick. He wasn't, you know, a little stumpy bloke, really. He wasn't, you know, imposing yeah, physically. Was, yeah. But he yeah. just had this, this this way with the ball and he was just mesmeric. And, you know, for a foreign-based player to come in and, and do it on day one, which is what he did, you know, the Arsenal game, doing, yeah. you know, the, the 360s he does on the ball, was incredible. And, you know, for, for a period, we had the best player in the league, really. Yeah. And yeah. that... Never happens <laughs> with us. Oh, and, and for ten million quid, which is an absolute steal as well, yeah, isn't it? You know? Exactly. Uh, yeah, well, like you said, he didn't have the passion. No. Um, but I'd also put Lanzini in there, the old Lanzini, you know, at the bowling ground of the village. I thought. Yeah. You know, he came in and he was he was special, wasn't he? Um, he's lo- I don't know what's happened to him. He's lost it a bit. I'm not sure, but just think injuries. I think that happens a lot with us, doesn't it? People get injured and they gone are the days that a player would I mean obviously you know from, from the the more experienced fans of you know obviously we're, we're, we're less experienced we're not we're not, we're not yet. Yeah. but from the more expert they talk about Alan Devonshire and Alan Devonshire obviously he was he he was you know a, a speed merchant really then he got injured and reinvented himself as more of a t- as a yeah. technical player and, and nowadays people don't do that they know from one thing so Lanzini is a very was a very silky technical player got injured and just can't really do it anymore now, no, I don't think. No, 
I think ever since his uh, Liverpool interest as well, maybe that's turned his head. I'm not sure. I don't think he's good enough to play for Liverpool anyway. But uh, mm. no, with the old Lanzini was a very good player. Him and Paye, you know, destroyed really exciting, him. yeah. Uh, but you know, since Paye left, has it shouldered too much responsibility on him to create? I'm mm-hmm. not sure. Um, but no, we've got four nils. That covers a bit of Paye's, you know, absence, if you like. Yeah, because I think four can be just as good. Yeah, right. no, definitely. And it's quite funny when I'm because obviously, you know, obviously, you know, Pyatt was obviously known for the free kicks, and um, I I can't remember which, it was one of the one of the video guys who used to work with at West Ham. Uh, they would go and film the training sessions and stuff for like B roll and stuff, yeah. and um, and Lanzini would score more free kicks in training than Pyatt in terms really? of yeah. So he he was a you know consistently he was scoring them, but obviously Pyatt was known for the free kicks, but. Um, yeah. Uh, but then since then lands in he's done bugger all um wow. <laughs> really so all right we'll put Dimi in uh let's go yeah. let's go right mid pardon me let's go right midfield then Dan this was so tough for us oh, I had a choice of four but I've gone with Ben Ayoun oh Yossi Yossi was I just thought he was special you know like Paye he wasn't the quickest was he on the eye but his skill and the you know I think it was it his goal against Fulham when he chipped it over the keeper. Thanks for them, yeah. um, I think it was Fulham, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was just special. He was just so good to watch. Um, I think we got him at a later time in his career as well, but if we got him earlier on, he would have been some player. Yeah, no, he was a good player, wasn't he? And he was just exciting, wasn't he? And uh, who's who interviewing? Oh, I ask him now. It might have been Monks. Probably monks or someone like that. He says when he goes through his notes, and and he he, he spoke about Yoshi uh, and saying how he was like he'd always put no, it's Anton. Sorry, it's Anton. Um, he always put a, he liked to challenge for for a, a guy who wasn't particularly built. He liked to put a foot in. You know, he had that sort yeah. of side to him, which I think West Ham fans love. Is the player who will put a challenge in. Quite clearly, he's not going to win many. You know, 50 50 no. balls from you know the likes, like sort of you know, yeah, you know, big domineering left backs, or whatever. But he has a go, and that's what West Ham fans like. You know, exactly. we know we're not going to win the league, but we want players who have a go. And Yoshi had that, had that, um, sort of in abundance. Now, I like Yoshi Berlin, yeah, yeah, he had a bit of everything, didn't he? He was, you know, he had passion, he was a, a team player, um, which is what you know, Pai, as A4 mentioned, lacked a bit in the playing the pie chart, so uh, um, yeah. I'd also consider Snodgrass for his effort. I think yeah, I think he's underrated. He divides totally. opinion, but it, you know he's passionate, he cares, um, and he's a good technical player as well. You know, he's I brilliant. know we've got him. At, you know, he's, he's he's cracking on now with his age, isn't he? In terms of footballing, but he, he he's a good player. I think he's um, great. I think Snoddy's great, and I, I love I love. I love anyone who can. I, I love a free. I love obviously. That's why I like Pyre because I like a, a spot kicker, and I like people. And he has. He's a bit like. I mean, Bowen's got great, great sort of. Obviously, we, we spoke before about spot kicks yeah. uh, and corners and stuff. But but Snoddy was the same, and it really whips him in. And you and you're right. He's a bit. You know, he's getting old, but he will run, run. He'll run. And I've I've yeah. I've missed him in the team. I think for the first couple of games, we could have done with him. Um, just for his enthusiasm, and it would hope he rubbed off on on the on the less, yeah. on the less just you know, just for variability as well as well yeah. as Yama Pell and to bring on he's a good player to bring on. Um, yeah, I would have had Diamante in there as well and Antonio. You know, purely for quality and effort as well, Diamante. Diamante was a good player. I like he was him. a nutter, though, wasn't he? That's yeah, I, I think just because he had that crazy hair. You know, that's what I love players who are a bit, little bit on the edge. I think where all West Ham players do, you know, I mean, Di Canio was on the edge, Diamante's yeah. on the edge, even like Johnny Monks, you know, he's on the yeah. edge. Yeah, he could just go one, you know, one minute. He, and you, yeah. he was a firecracker, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think people appreciate how good a player Diamante was. I think because he wasn't around for long enough. But he was a really good player for us, a really good player. That's why I had him in there. Um, he loved the club as well, didn't he? He said in a quote yeah. recently that he loved West Ham and he loved his time. So yeah, um, yeah, they all do. They all seem. You know, there's very few players who will leave West Ham and say they didn't enjoy their time at the that the fans and, and people like that. But, you know, because they all have an impression. It seems we all, we have an impression on all players who come in. You know, even like you got to think a lot of these foreign like Tevez and people like that who yeah, was only here for six months really. Um, yeah, he only played a few games, didn't he? So yeah, and, and still a, a massive impact. Right, let's go into central midfield. And Dan, who's your first centre midfielder? 
I couldn't not put Marky Noble in there. Yeah. Um, purely for the servant he's been. You know, he's played more games than any other player, hasn't he? Um, Solano as well. Nolan, Son. Oh, Solano. That's a, yeah, that's a good shout. Solano oh, was a oh, I loved Nobby. Yeah, he was brilliant, wasn't yeah. he? He was also a spot kicker as well, Russ. Yeah, he uh, was. Yeah, that's why I liked yeah. him, I think. Yeah, he scored a one against Derby, didn't he? You remember yeah. that one? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not Nobby as well, but no, not Noble for me, just. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, he's obviously one away, two away from 500. I think he's one yes. away, might be, or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's very, very close. I think it's away. Yeah, because I think if he plays against Burnley, it'll be 499. Because I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, I think so. So I think, oh, it's a shame because it'd be nice for, although there's no bugger in the stand, but at least it'd be nice if it was at home that he got his 500th. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, great man. And and obviously, as I said, I'm very fortunate enough to, to go to the games. And um, he wasn't obviously in the squad for the Chelsea game. Wow. And uh, it's saying I'm really annoyed I didn't take a picture of because he was sitting in the um, what I call the, the protest bit. So when, when we had the protest, <laughs> where, the, where the disabled people, where the disabled guys are, yeah. um, you know, so obviously two meet and it's it actually right. really nicely socially distanced because you've got the obviously wheelchairs in between. So the, the chairs are already two meters apart, roughly already. So it's him, David Martin, and, and Martin who we do oh, the. Um, you're just the, thinking in your head, aren't you? Should I do it? Should I do it? But... Yeah. Exactly. So, so there's a three. So, so there, so Nobles was sitting there, and uh, when that third goal came in, it was almost like he almost—I swear—he was like going to punch a hole through the wall. He was. There was so much joy in the man's heart. You could see he was so ecstatic. But I was like, oh, if I, I wish I had a camera to have filmed it because no one saw it. But it just yeah. shows you how much the club meant to him. Exactly. Um, and and I think that that's a very rare commodity now in in the game where you you know boyhood club you play for boyhood club you know footballers move all over the place now um, yes, yeah. across the world and so he, very rare he had a chance to leave as well didn't he uh, he had a chance to go to Fulham so yeah you know the fans turned it down persevered got in the team scored a few goals and never looked back shows you know it was a testament to his character um, yeah. and I hope I hope when he retires you know there's talk about it next season wasn't there but, um, yeah. Whenever he does, I hope he stays on as, as a coach because I think he deserves it and I think he bring the best out of younger players as well in the setup. So. No, yeah, I mean we interviewed Kevin Keane and um, we spoke about Mark Noble, and he is in his ear all the time about becoming a coach because apparently he's really good with the kids, like really good yeah. at coaching the kids. And you could imagine that because they look up to him because he's a, he's a current yeah, Premier League player and the yeah. captain and you know so many games. But um, apparently he's a really good coach, so. Um, but he's, he's not paying any attention until after he's retired. So as you can imagine, oh, Mark. So. Like when you, like when other players come in as well, they always mention Noble. Yeah. Noble, this, well, that Noble helped me, and um, you know that, that just shows the character he is, like you said. So. Yeah, it's a good shout. Good point. Yeah. Right, we we'll put Marky Noble in. Who's he going to partner in that middle, then, Dan? Scotty Parker. Oh, I reckon Scotty. that's a good uh, good little partnership. Just Scotty because. Yeah. You know, the times were in trouble and avoided relegation. I remember the goal he scored against Wigan and just the player he was. He was a good technical player as well and and, it, and he really cared. Um, yeah. You know, and who else would I have in there? Collison. Collison is a good shout for the player mm-hmm. he was. And when uh, Stuart Downing in 2014-15, when he moved into that no, central... Yeah, club, yeah, yeah. Um, he was really important as Revelation, well. And, then. and obviously Carrick as well. You know, you mm-hmm. can't forget him what a player he was, so... Yeah, but Parker for me. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, he was one of those players, there's very few players who you can see during a game if it's not going the, the way of the team. He's almost gone like, oh, fuck it, I'll do it myself. And like, literally, there's games where he was just running the game himself. And obviously, everyone, everyone yeah. talked about the West Brom game away yeah. when he gave the half time team talk and there's 3 0 down and turned it down to 3 0. 3 0, wasn't it? And yeah. Colton was saying, you know, they were crying, like, players had tears in their eyes and. And he's doing a good job at Fulham, you know. I, you know, he's he yeah. one day, you know. But uh, yeah, he's. A, I think he's yeah. he's the type of man. I see him very similar in sort of that Eddie Howe sort of role, you know. Sort of yeah, I, I, a, a yeah. bunch of like young young players will respect him and bring and will bring the best out of him. But um, yeah, no, you never know. You never know what will happen. But uh, no, I yes, I wouldn't one day him being West Ham manager. Uh, I wouldn't, no, but... no. I mean, yeah, he's he's got that sort of. West Ham way about him, do you know what I mean? Yeah, he knows the club, doesn't he? He knows the yeah. club. He always has to run his socks off. Um, and, you know, testament to him as a manager, he's doing really well, isn't he, at Fulham? So, fingers crossed they can come up under him and, and we can see him in the Premier League back yeah. at uh, 
PLS. So I mean, nice I mean similar to you know, similar to you know, someone like Kevin Nolan. You know, he understands the club, and he's obviously coming as Moise's number two, and yeah. just seems to be a, a great dynamic to have in the club. And yeah. it seems yeah. that West Ham are doing that more often now. We're getting the Carlton Coles and and as a Zavon Hines. Yes, I was going to mention Carlton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. they're bringing in all these like. Old players, and obviously you've got Steve Potts and Key. Zavon and stuff Hines like as well, isn't he? Zavon yeah, Zavon's Hines in, yeah, with him. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, which... and Conch. And, it's, and yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah, completely. It's the right way to go. Um, completely. Better than game, you know, unknown people and who, don't, who don't know the club. So, like you said, it's, it's a good way to go. Yeah. And we and West Ham fans appreciate that more, I think. We love an academy boy coming through. We love, oh, you know, an old boy few, coming back. We, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah. And then when they leave, we sh- we hate them. <laughs> so <laughs> never that's, speak to them again. Yeah. Never. That's the West Ham way. Right. Okay. Up front. Who have we got up front then, Dan? Tevez. First of all, I know he only played a few games, but he was fundamental to us staying up. And oh yeah, his passion as well. And yeah. uh, he was he was an unbelievable striker. Uh, obviously, you know, we set the foundations for him to be successful in England, didn't we? So yeah. um, without us, he wouldn't have been the player he was. So. No, he was some player. He was a good player. And it's funny, we interviewed, uh, we interviewed uh, Anton, I think also, yes, we, it was John Pantsil randomly. And uh, we asked him about, I asked him about Tevez, it's like, well, and Mascherano, what happens, you know, as a West Ham, you know, you, you turn up to training and there's like Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano. And they were like, well, it's just football, isn't it? Yeah, no, but, you're thinking, yeah. Players that were, so. I remember watching on the ticker on the BBC website, and and it was like we we signed who? Oh my god! Like what's going on here? You know, I never thought that's it. You know, like when when obviously yeah. when, when City got taken over and they they bought Rubinho that day, didn't they? And yeah. uh, I was like, this is like R one. This is great. Here we go, guys. Here we go. He was like no, yeah. work out like that. but um, no, funny. But it was a good story about Car- about Carlitos that Anton said was um, he really wanted to be part of the group. He didn't speak any English. He always had his translator. No, and, yeah, he struggled. Yeah, he did struggle with English, but he always had his translator with him. And they went out on a night out to like a nightclub somewhere up in London. And, mm. and Carlitos turned up with his <laughs> translator. And so, and then but literally was on the dance floor all night, just like literally sweating buckets, just like really having a go, you know. And I like people who do that. You think, you know, you have a go. He, uh, did, do you reckon he played it out loud? Because, you know, they speak on translator. What yeah, 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 like on the Google, like the Google thing, like the adverts you get. Oh, yeah. What's your Saved number? talking, didn't it, though? So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I think he's it's, yeah, it's a good player, as you said. Uh, and again, it's all about that, isn't it? So, it is, like, but it's the it's same, same again. You know, he, he was almost doing too much when he started with us. Yeah. Um, he was trying to be all over the pitch, and, and Kerbs sort of said, you know, stay up there. And he yeah. became a much more effective player, a bit like an out of it, you know, when when he was a bit he, he was he was doing yeah. nothing really on the right, and then boys just whacked him up front and they went, All right, stay up there. And he became a really good player for us. Um yeah. I right. think for Tevez that release was when he got that free kick uh, against Spurs. Yeah. That was a release for him, and then he scored that cracker against Chelsea and then and it just went on and on. And um but yeah, like you said, you know, Kerb said you know, stay up there more, don't do too much, and that suited his game more. So Exactly. And then... Also, Harewood as well was in there, Sheringham, Calvin sure. Cole, uh, Craig Bellamy as well. He was a good player. I yeah. like Bellamy's. Yeah. No, I used to like I used to like Harewood because I used to like Harewood because he used to that, that turn and he, he'd go into the corner between the Bobby Moore and the West Stand. And he would do, I always used to call it Marlon Calder because literally he would get in there and he'd do a little turn and go run down the byline and cross it in. Yeah. And because that's literally where I, where I sat and like the box was like there. And so you, I was in the perfect position to see the, see here or corner. But uh, yeah, good old Marlon. Right, okay. I'll always, hey, go on. Yeah, go on. No, go on, Dan. What did you say, man? Harewood and Zamo. You remember when um, we were going up in Ipswich, Ipswich away, Harewood, you know, long field ball to Zamo at the back. And he, he just chipped it in. That was yeah. that always, you know, uh, remind me of a good goal because, you know, him and Zamo were, were crucial, weren't they, to us? They, and they were such they were. players as well. Underrated. They they're very un- underrated, I think. Very underrated outside of West Ham. Again, we have that a lot of I mean, where players play for West Ham who are bloody good, but they get underrated when people are looking in. Um, but we yeah. knew like him, like Julian Dix, and people like that who were fantastic players. But you know, outside of West Ham, you didn't appreciate him as much. Um, right, so we put Carlos in, and who's Carlos going to partner? 
Dino. Dean Ashton. Dino. Dino, yeah. I um again, you know, you're looking at Arnie, Caro, Sacco, um, but Dino was just well I can't describe how good he was. I thought he was brilliant. He was such yeah. a robust striker, but his finishing was incredible and you know, bar that injury he got, he would have he would have gone to the top for me. He would have played at Man United, someone like that, because yeah. he was he was that good. Yeah. And and not not just for Premier League, but for England, you know, people were crying. Exactly, yeah. Rooney was crying out for a decent strike partner and, and he would have been that person, wouldn't he? he would. Without without a doubt. Yeah. Um I still can't watch I still don't every time I see sort of Sean White Phillips on the telly or whatever, I, I still like have this sort of disgust towards him even now you know he was, he was on Crouchy's thing the other day and, and I switched it off um, and my wife said what are you doing I was like sure what Phillips <laughs> like, yeah, watch yeah as soon as as soon as I hear him in the press or whatever I always think of Dino yeah I'm sure it's innocuous but like you I always is, have yeah. a few phrases in the back of my head that you know I, I refuse not to release you know what I mean that yeah. kind of thing but um yeah, he was so unfortunate because he would have been a cracking player. You know, some of the goals he scored, the overheads, everything. You know, yeah. everything. No, exactly. And I mean, I had, we talk about Bowen, and I, I had the same excitement when we signed Bowen as I did when we signed Ashton. He was that young Championship British player who knew he was going to be mustard as soon as he came in, and and he was. He was a great player. He was, yeah, he was, yeah. he was so. He was a player we we'd missed for so many years, and we haven't had since that sort of target man, ball playing target man. He yeah. had everything. He as a player, as a forward, he had everything. You know, he, he could did. beat a man yeah. for pace. He could turn. He could header. He had the skill. I mean, you saw Mark Mark Noble's testimony. Yeah, he still had it. So yeah, he was he was incredible. You remember that uh, goal he scored against City in the cup where he chopped it around the defender and then left foot. And like you said, he he just had everything for me. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And and that and that obviously that completes the Dan Eleven. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been great chatting to you, man. Paper. Yeah, it's right. looking good, man. It's looking good, man. It's looking good. And obviously, people will see it down the side. He's when, he, when he's when I've done the editing. If I've gone the right way, if not, it's that way. Uh, one or the other. <laughs> I can never remember. I'm not very good at this. Uh, but um, <laughs> but thanks, Dan. It's been really great chatting to you. I really appreciate the, the time you spent. There's been no a lot problem. of this. There's been a lot of decisions there. I can see a lot of late night agonising cold sweat oh decisions. yeah last night in particular i was i was going over it you know in my head like this, this. <laughs> um, no yeah i've got there in the end and it's a pleasure to to be coming on thank you yes, and man, uh, no. all the best yeah thank you very much obviously thank you everyone for watching you know what to do share like subscribe um and until next time from me and dan take care everyone we'll see you very very soon see you bye-bye